Other five are contesting for the three Paris 2024 quarter final number one in the Rico of men's tournament here at the World Championships of 2023. An all Asian affair as Indonesia take on Japan. Waterproofs at the ready for the officials out here. It is a little damp. A season of new faces, and we've talked about this many times, but uh, Arif Panchestu from Indonesia, just 19 years old, going up against Saito Fumiya from Japan, just 18. Definitely surprises, right? Yeah, surprises and, and new faces also because of their age. They uh, just haven't had the time to prove themselves yet over the last couple of years, but uh, well, they have proven themselves this World Championships. Yeah, they certainly have, especially this man here, Saito Fumiya, was in the Japanese team that booked their team spot at Paris 2024 a couple of days ago, and it will be Saito to get the quarterfinals underway. Nine. Nine. These first couple of arrows are going to be um, well very important to get into the match, know if the circumstances here are similar to the trading Eight. field or a training venue. Um, so as you see, immediately moves his side because he feels like that shot um, was good enough to land in the gold. Eight. Eight. Nine. And just going in the right direction, closer to the uh, center of the target. That's Saito drifting away from it. Eight. Eight. Yeah, and also you could see on his face there that he wasn't too pleased with that shot. But uh, so far, every arrow has been high. Eight. Eight. Maybe we can uh, blame a little bit of uh, inexperience here. Uh, typically you'll see experienced archers, they come onto the venue, shoot their first arrow and use that as a marker. Then, uh, you know, move their sights and they hit the middle afterwards. Here you can see they both hit high, so there must be a difference in either how hard it was raining uh, when they were warming up for this or maybe uh, in the circumstances on the uh, practice venue. And now, yeah, they, they I just haven't adjusted properly for that. How did you manage to answer the question that I haven't already asked? <laughs> um, I was just going to say about the conditions. It, it, it's a little damp out there. In uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago, it was coming down a little bit harder. So it has it has eased off a bit. Yeah, so it might be that stuff is drying out. Um, if your string is wet, for instance, it obviously has more mass weight. So then your arrows fly a bit slower. Uh, so you adjust your sight for that. If they were waiting in, uh, let's say, a tent, for instance, and uh, they were sitting dry, the string had time to dry out a bit, therefore becoming lighter and making the arrows fly faster, putting a little more energy into them. I like it. Great. Very descriptive illustration of what's going on with all the equipment. One apiece, uh, 25s in the first set. We are expecting them to start shooting slightly higher scores now. Nine. Not really feeling super comfortable on the field just yet, I think. Still a bit shaky. Well, Panjestu getting the first 10 of the match. 
Nine. Of course, uh, Saito Fumia has been on the venue already, uh, be it not today. Um, so he has had some uh, previous experience here shooting with the team um, and grabbing that Olympic quota spot for teams before. Nine. Nine. So consistency at 27 means Panchestu needs a nine himself but gets the 10 for a clear two set point lead there three to one for the Indonesian a bit of pressure there for the first time and a good response from the Indonesian yeah and he has shown that he uh, is pretty good at uh, dealing with pressure because he has beaten well, maybe the favorite to uh, win this world championships Kim Woodgen in this way to this uh, final or elite eight yep and he's uh, he's got uh, uh, well uh, he's got some Olympic experience. He competed in Tokyo and you know, came onto the scene really in the World Cups in 2022. Went out to Florian Unruh of Germany in Tokyo. Yeah, not really a shame in that. Uh, number two in the world uh, ranking currently and uh, European Games winner. Yeah, he's all right. A good recovery from that eight in the middle as well, Chef uh, Pangestu. Uh, the two tens sandwiching that eight in the second set. Yeah, you can you can sometimes get away with an eight if your opponent is not shooting many tens uh, or none at all in this uh, instance. Um, you do need to shoot some tens yourself if you want to make up for that little mistake. Oh, there we go. That will be a nerve settling arrow. Adjusting a side to that nine, which is interesting because the first arrow was well, bang on in the middle. Um, so I wonder if his Eight first stops. arrow, he felt like it wasn't such a good shot. And the second arrow was shot a little bit better, according to him. Pulling that eight one stops. across the right. Uh, an eight means that uh, Pangestu still has a shot at uh, squaring things up. Needs a ten. Nine. Just outside, Nine. and so we are all square here. Chef, sometimes it, when you get to the quarterfinal stages of a competition, um, part of the job not only is to try and win that quarterfinal, but to put down a marker to perhaps put some fear into the other athletes competing in the quarterfinal stages. I'm not sure I'm seeing that here. No, not just yet. Uh, I think the other athletes um, that are yet to come, uh, they're probably watching this match, or at least uh, they know what this match is. Uh, uh, well, what's happening in this match um, and I don't think they will be extremely scared for um, the level of shooting just, just yet but perhaps whoever comes through it will uh, be able to ride on that experience and you can actually start to see that, uh, how heavy the rain is at the moment not really bothering the athletes at the moment no, I don't think it's uh, the type of rain that makes you completely soaked through and through, but um, it will be slightly annoying and they will be hoping that it doesn't get worse than this. Three apiece between Pangestu and Saito. Saito to shoot first in set number four. A bit shaky there, but uh, yeah, it seems like he's not really settling into the nerves, but uh, is learning to deal with it. Yeah, rather. riding through them. It's interesting as well, part of his process, Saito, is he opens his eyes really wide as he releases the arrow. <laughs> I don't know why I find that amusing, but I do. <laughs> yeah, 
shaking his head, he knows that he just threw away a perfect opportunity and Arif can now clinch the set with a 10, but he doesn't, or he doesn't clinch the set. He could have tied the set. He could have done, and uh, the Japanese athlete coming from uh, behind, he was 3-1 down after two, now leads 5-3. Subject, of course, to confirmation from the target judge, but there was nothing really that looked close to line. No, it seemed like it was pretty clear that uh, it was a 27 place 28. You can see here the shaking, even in, in high speed, you can see the wobbling. Yeah, huge amounts of nerves. But you always say that at full draw, you can't possibly be completely still. No, completely still is impossible, but um, there, there's always going to be a bit of a muscle tremor. Uh, and yeah, you're, you're holding uh, the draw weight of the bow, which typically speaking, uh, I mean, these guys are still pretty young, but typically speaking, that's about 50 pounds of draw weight for the recurve men's division. Uh, so it's, it's quite substantial. Um, and that would be very impressive if you could just stand there and hold it completely still. And at the same time, we talk about full draw, but actually there's still movement going on. You're still pushing and pulling at the same time. Yeah, ideally you have like uh, maybe one or two millimeters to, to pull still. Uh, typically you'll see two to four millimeters that you have to pull the bulb further back um, to get the arrow through the clicker, which is what you see um, on the, the front end of the bow. Um, Right by the tip of the arrow, basically. Yeah, it's a little metal plate. You can see it here with the fluorescent green plate. And it clicks, and then he knows that he has reached his draw length and he can release the arrow. So it's not necessarily you may release your arrow. It's just smart to do it after the clicker because it's your draw length indicator. You're going to be more consistent if you use it. Well, as the rain starts to come down a lot harder, a lot heavier, the standard and the score has gone through the roof. Oh, and they need to. Um, if Arif puts his last arrow into the 10 ring, he is for sure going to go into a shoot off. You don't mind a shoot off, do you? Oh, it's hit the line. A 30 for Arif Pangestu means we will have a shoot off. It does mean Saito gets a little practice run at that shoot off. Well, if he does that in the shoot-off, he has a very good chance. <laughs> a great chance. 5-5 five, five in the first recurve men's individual quarter-final here in Berlin. The last of the live sessions at these World Championships. And we're starting with a shoot-off. Chef, I'm sure most of the audience uh, know what a shoot-off is like, but remind me. Yeah, for the, for the people who don't know what a shoot-off will uh, be like, it's um, basically going to be... Both archers shoot one arrow. Uh, arrow that hits, uh, hits closest to the center will win the match. So they're cleaning the target faces at the moment, i.e. they're putting up new target faces. So none of these holes that you can see here from the arrow shot already would interfere if they need to go to a measure. Yeah, so uh, they want to have a clean target face so that if they were to use some, uh, some calipers or uh, measuring devices, uh, they can do that without having any holes in the target interfere. Here we see the crew hard at work. Um, through this match, it's been up and down. Uh, Saito's had to come back from behind to draw a level. The rain started to come down. Uh, too, too difficult really to call this one, but Saito had that last arrow as a bit of a rehearsal. Yeah, it's a bit difficult now because uh, Saito grew into the match. You can see his scores gradually increased, whereas uh, Benjesto was a little bit up and down, but he did shoot that 30 to get the shoot off in the first place, so he did show that he's in it to win it. I'm trying to put the conditions out of their mind. It comes down to a single arrow for this quarter-final to be decided. A place in the semi-finals of the recurve men's competition comes down to the next two arrows. Saito, Fumia to shoot first. And a very quick shot that you could see by the reaction of his bow arm that he knew that was going to go left and low. A really good chance here for Pangestu. And he's done it. 
a superb one, probably on the X ring, just inside the uh, 10. And Panjestu keeps his dream for booking a place for Indonesia at the next Olympic Games alive by winning quarterfinal number one. A shaky start from the pair of them, Chef. Yeah, shaky start indeed. I think um, well, they had to be the first ones to go into the finals venue this session. Uh, the, the youngest pair up, I think, of the final eight or the elite eight. Um, so, yeah, it was always going to be interesting to see how they would cope with this pressure, but, uh, well, they cope well. Yeah, they're uh, two of three teenagers in the Elite Eight. Uh, the other one is uh, someone you might know, a Korean chap, Kim J. Duk. Yeah, and, and some teenager, yes.